UConn went up against UCLA, and it's pretty clear who the better team was. UCLA was better in the backcourt and in the front court. We are just going to break it down and go through some of the things that stuck out most during this game. And the first thing is UCLA is good. So uh, I did the preseason video on them, and yeah, they are as advertised. And uh, Corey Close was af- talking after the game. Uh, by the way, she she's my type of coach. She's not a rah-rah coach. She talks about how she makes the adjustments at halftime, and really there's no win-one for the Gipper speech or anything like that, which I love. But she reckons UCLA played a B game last night. And they just, they know they're building and they know they have something special. Now, one thing I did not realize until this game, and it's remiss of me, but I did not realize that Emily Vassoir was injured. So she got injured about a week ago uh, for playing for her national team, Germany, as they were trying, uh, getting ready for qualifiers. And it appears that she's... Uh, She's done an ACL as well, and UConn is damn lucky that she was not playing. Well, I'm sure they don't want her injured, but she is good as well. She's a stretch four, has size, six foot four, and I can only imagine how devastating she would have been comboed with bets, and what a problem that, because they had, UConn had all the problems they could handle with bets, and if you would have thrown the 6-4 Bassoir in there, I reckon this game could have gotten pretty ugly. But as it was, it was really just UCLA controlling the whole way through, and part of that was just up front. So Aaliyah Edwards was just neutralized. She really struggled. Going 2-12 for 12 from the field for 5 points. Uh, overall, she got five rebounds, and it was just a tough night. And Gino had to go to the bench and brought in Amari DeBerry. And to be honest, I thought that was a little bit unfair. I mean, that's sort of like when you're, you know, your football team is getting their butt kicked, and the coach decides to go back to the other quarterback. You know, when the offensive line's getting killed, and they're, you know, the quarterback's like, "Hell, you haven't started me all season, and we're getting our ass kicked, and now it's emergency break glass." It's sort of like that to a certain extent, because you knew you were going to be facing UCLA who had a monster big. I mean, it's not, it's not unknown news. You know, hell I did a video on it. So if I knew this was coming and super bigs were going to be a problem, then why weren't you sort of giving DeBerry more minutes? Like Dayton, she played five minutes, NC state, no minutes, Maryland. When you were up, you only got her two minutes in the game. And then Minnesota, two minutes, and then you get UCLA, and you're like, okay, this is the chance. We're going to break her out now. You knew you are going to need her in those blowout games, get her minutes. I know it's painful. I know she's not the player that Gino likes, but you're going to have to eat it. It's it's just, you can't just go, okay, we're getting crushed on the boards. Oh my God, we'll go to DeBerry. I mean, that's just setting her up for failure. I mean, it's a dance, it's a dance mom's thing. Once again, Sophie set up to fail. If you know, you know. So really all UConn had in this game was Paige Beckers, and she did everything basically. Going 9 of 23 for 31 points. Um, You didn't get much from uh, Mule. She got 6 points on 2 for 5 shooting. She had a bad turnover, but that, that happens. It took Aubrey Griffin a while to get going, but she ultimately got 11 points off 4 for 9 shooting. And then other than that, they didn't have much else from the starters, and they absolutely got nothing from the bench. So the only thing they got, Ashlyn Shade got three points, and that was it versus UCLA's 15 points. Uh, Brady got 22 minutes, DeBerry nine minutes, Shade 12, and then Cadence Samuels only got four minutes and no points. And it's apparent that Gina's sort of losing trust in her. I've been uh, going back and forth in the comments section because I keep on saying, if she's not shooting, she's not playing. So I'm like, she does more than just shoot. But uh, I, I keep on complaining about her defense or saying it needs work. And there was one illustration that didn't look good. Like she sort of switched off and then switched back to her man. And if she switched back to her man, they backdoored her. And they were just running around after that and gave up an open, open three-pointer. 
after the game, one of the things Gino said, it's tough if you don't have your, your shooters out there. It's tough to get the points. Sort of alluding that, uh, you know, FUD's out and Ducharme's out. And um, they're saying Ducharme is day-to-day, which sort of worries me. Are they going to go down this Caroline Ducharme road again of will she or won't she play? You have to ask because of your past, but are you feeling okay coming out of the game? <clears throat> uh, physically? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, there's always ups and downs, but yeah, I'm feeling okay. Is she healthy or isn't she healthy? That's the question. I mean, I don't wish her any ill will or anything. I want her to be healthy, but you just can't really depend on her. And I just don't know how much longer they can do that. That, oh, you know, it's it's Friday. She can't play, but Saturday it's good enough and we'll get her in and the whole management plan. because it, And it's not even like she's putting up numbers when she is playing. So I don't know how much the stiff neck is impacting her and where she's at. And if that's what you want to put your hopes on. And I think UConn needs to look in the mirror and sort of say, yeah, we're, we're not real good. We're not great right now. And we have to develop these players. It's going to be painful, but we have to give, you know, Brady got 22 minutes, which is good. And then Shade got 12, but you're going to have to develop uh, Caden Samuel. So you just can't limit her to four minutes. If you don't know what you're going to get from Descharm, then she needs to play. And, and learn and develop and you're not going to do that from the bench and he's going to have to eat it and I know he doesn't like Gino doesn't like to eat it and play rookies and their mistakes but ultimately that is what they're going to have to do um, because your best hope is to develop the young kids I mean they seem like they have talent and everything else and that is just the new way of the world UConn just doesn't get every single player they want and have a, you know, a three deep lineup right now. That, that seems like South Carolina actually. And hence why they are so desperate to get Sarah strong, because if Edwards doesn't return next year, and I don't think she will, man, they are thin up front or they're depending on a lot of unproven players, which includes Patterson, hopefully ice develops. And then on top of that, El Alfie, they need to develop, and if they don't have anybody else, oof, you know, <laughs> unless they can score like a Dorka, <laughs> any chance they can get Dorka back from Minnesota, that's truly what they need. They need Lou Lopez and Dorka to get like a sixth COVID year after playing <laughs> in the WNBA. Unlikely, I don't think. Uh, but really, the mantra this year should be developing the kids, developing the kids, because all you have right now is one superstar in Paige Beckers who will get better and better, and you just need to build enough around her or hope that she comes back like hell for next year and you have sort of seasoned these young kids so they can make a strong run next year. As well, UConn needs to get a hell of an NIL committee together and make sure they get Edwards to come back somehow, some way. As well with Griffin as well. That would be a big help. Um, anyway, your comments. Oh, last thing. I, I guess the big goal is really to build for South Carolina. Like, you have tough games ahead. I think you're playing Texas and, and you'll have, like, Louisville and North Carolina. You'll probably have a few losses along the way. But it's really building to South Carolina. I think they play them in February and see where you can get. That includes playing to Barry Gino. You got to eat it and play her. Give me your comments and your poison. Talk to you after Kansas. Good night.